Hello, welcome to Serlin Zone. I'm Alan, here in No Man's Sky with the uh, Explorer Zero. And we've come back to the new Fancy Star base to have a look at the new statue. And for the celebration of the anniversary of uh, the release of Fancy Star Online, which I did see some articles about it and I looked up the dates it was actually in Japan it was the 21st of December 2000 then North America got it January the 29th and in the Europe and the UK we got it on February the 15th so yeah amazing how time flies so I've got some uh, got some uh, Fireworks. Oh, doing that the wrong way. Oh, this is it. Yeah, I'll put some fireworks down. For our celebration. And it was such a sort of revolutionary game, especially for console players. I can still remember the first time going online with it, and I was so hooked on it. The only reason you couldn't do it too much was because the cost of it. It was a shame it never came out when the Dreamcast was released or within a few months because I think the Dreamcast would have done a lot better. We could even be like Dreamcast 2 and 3. Unfortunately that wasn't the case. It was a great game but it didn't quite keep the Dreamcast alive. But Fancy Star still kept kept on they kept different games and uh, we used to get them all until about eight or so years ago when Fantasy Star Online 2 and Fantasy Star Nova came out and they never came out in America or the EU so uh, luckily this year we've had the Fantasy Star Online 2 come out in America on the PC and the Xbox and now it's come out in Europe as well. I'm just hoping that it comes out on the PS4 sometime soon so I can do some videos of it and uh, I did see also that they're um, giving like an upgrade to it early next year called Fantasy Star Online 2 New, New Genesis which is going to upgrade the graphics and the gameplay so that's cool and uh, I was thinking actually I don't know why I've got no evidence for it but I'm, I've got a feeling maybe you know next year we might get a video from Sega announcing a new Fantasy Star single player adventure to be released on all platforms, maybe with a bit of online multiplayer. So it probably won't happen, but you know, it's a positive thought. Put it out there into the world, you never know, it might happen. That's my prediction. <laughs> but here's the Dell Saber that I've done. I'm really pleased again how he's come out took a lot of time um, especially going on the game and drawing him because it's as you know when you play it he's a very fast character sort of zooms in from far away in the room on top of you and then I was trying to sort of run around and draw him and I ended up trying to paralyze him so I could actually get close and have a really good look at the details but yeah he's come out really well and I've got the um, let's put the glasses on I've got the my guidebook here and see what it says about the Del Saber. Right. Del Sabers aren't the toughest enemy in the ruins, but they're close, as the only enemy bright enough to use a shield to to use a shield or rather a mutated left arm. Their evasion is extremely high. In a single player game, you have no choice but to attack until you get a shot through or use long range hit and run tactics but don't get too far away from them or they'll leap in and nail you with their sword in multiplayer games have one player hold their attention while the others circle around and stab them in the back force you should use ice spells to freeze them in place or just hit them with grants and run away yeah I had um I had a good battle with them on with my uh, hunter character on very hard I've actually got her on to the ultimate levels now but on very hard I, I had a room where four of them appeared and I 
moved to the side as you all as you all came at me together and uh, used my long sword which hit them all at the same time and I timed it so I moved as they attacked hit them and then moved and got into that rhythm and I got them all at the same time and I was really pleased with that it's sort of one of those signs when you just sort of you get it right and you think oh if, I, if that would be on PS1 I definitely recorded that so I thought right I've got, I've got good against them but they're definitely an enemy when you first encounter them in the ruins they're bound to have killed you because you just wouldn't expect it you don't see them and they just zoom right in, right on top of you there's normally more than one and they will um quite often inflict um confusion on you as well so you're gonna have to uh get used to them get leveled up and you can soon get used to fighting them get the tactics you just got to get in that rhythm because as it says they've got very good evasion I'm just gonna just change the time of day make it a bit lighter That's better. So there he is. As I say it took a while to draw him, and uh, I was really pleased how I got got all his features and uh, got them all like I tried to, all sort of moving independently. So he got some sort of looks like he's moving, and all the lights on him are what he has on him, except for the red lights that I put on the his arm blade just to make it glow nice and red and the yellow lights that I put on the little tendrils he has at his back those are something I thought oh, I've got to try can I get them close to it and I was really pleased in how I got those they look like they're tendrils and they got different movement on the back of him and his head is, is a bit bigger than his head normally but I've got the shape of it really well and also when I paralyzed him I got up close I saw that he does actually have two yellow eyes sort of uh, diamond shaped yellow eyes but this is one of the the del saber is one of the creatures that will drop body parts so you can if you're lucky and it's not too rare actually it will drop its right arm and then once you've done the quest, you can get Dr. Montague to make you a Del Saber Buster out of it. And that's a good one-handed sword weapon. And the other one he can drop is the left hand, which you can make the Del Saber uh, Shield, or Shield of Del Saber, I think it's called. And it looks quite smart. It looks very much like the hand. It's got that sort of shape to it, and it's one of the shields you can, you know, you can see the character wearing it. And I did look up to see because I know they give you a boost and it if you if you use both of them it doubles the attack is doubled on the sword and your evasion is doubled as well so it's, it's not bad I tend to like to use the one the big two-handed sword or the long pikes where you can hit more than one but it's a, that is a good boost and there's the uh, the tendrils, like I say, that come out of his back. I, I really wanted to get them on there, and I've got them at different angles and that, which was very tricky, but I'm pleased I made the effort. And again, I brought all the legs and the arms up separately and made them close so I could get them at different angles. And I was, the last thing I did, I was really pleased. I managed to glitch and get the fingers of the hand curling in, and that makes that hand look a lot more natural. Yeah, he's come out well. Let's have a little pan around him again. Like I say, it's definitely one who would have killed you 
when you first met them, they just teleport right across the room, and there's normally more than one. Let's get a nice uh, view there. Oh, that's a good one with the sign in there as well, showing the 20th anniversary. So hope you like that one with the uh, brought back some memories of the Dell Sabre. But uh, I think the Sterling Zone is fading away now, so time to get back to the real world. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.